Okay. So, um, I need to go into picture one key down, and I cannot, off the top of my head, remember what the key code is for pushing, I guess the control button will work, just so I've got the arrow keys on one side, the control button will work, so I'll say, uh, form1.caption equals key code, I will run it, push control, and see that the number is 17. So, we'll move on from there. Oh, um, I might need that later. So if key code equals, uh, what was it, 17 or 18? <sighs> okay, another time it would be good if this was a, a video conference. 17. Somebody could have said 17. No. All right, so if key code equals 17, and I'm going to put in a condition here, and action does not equal... jumping or falling, Pre pretty much, you know what, we, it'd be easier to specify what action he has to be doing in order to attack instead of what he can't be doing. For example, if it was hurt, you know, if you are if you have a certain, maybe it's even a half a second stun before you're supposed to be doing anything, we don't want him to be able to swing his weapon immediately, you know, at any time during that. He should have to, you know, so he can't be in the process of, of being stunned. Um, you, you shouldn't be able to swing while you're in the middle of shooting your weapon off or dying or while you're uh, falling or jumping. So, you know, let's just say you can if you're standing and let's say you can if you're running or if you're crouching. So, 0, 1, or 4. We'll just stick with that. 0, 1, or 4. Um, let's see here and action equals zero, or action equals one, or action equals four. Now, um, some of you might wonder how I jumped back to this spot of code so fast. When I was looking up there, I knew that I still had the cursor down here, wherever here was, so I just hit one of the keys on the keyboard and it jumps you to where your cursor's at. Um, this, for those of you who are kind of new with stringing together ands and ors, by, oops, I gotta put a then, okay, by putting this into brackets, it looks at it like this. If the key I pushed is the control button and s this is all true, then it does something. And this middle part here wants me his action to either be zero for standing still, or he has to be running, or he has to be crouching. So that's how that works. Hopefully you guys can follow. Then action equals what is this, 4 for attacking? It can't be 4. 5. Action equals 5, and we're going to set animation equal to 0, because again, he uh, this is going to involve animating, so we would always make sure his animation is set to 0 when that happens. So action equals 5, animation is 0. Let's go find a spot to put that in. Uh, hit, oh, for draw hero, we might as well start with that, right? Draw hero is somewhere around here. Here we go. If action equals 5, then temp A equals... It's these two. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus, we're going to have to do um, the animation for it. And I have a feeling that we're going to be using the animation is not going to increase by one each time because there's only two animations. So there's probably going to be some integer um, fraction. So we're going to do the same thing we did up here with running and say integer of animation. So um, in timer, we're going to oh I'll run it just so we can see what happens if I push control. He goes to swing, but nothing happens because he. Uh, he doesn't have any code for the animation to change. So, we should put that here. Somewhere in here. If action equals 4 then. So he's swinging. I'm actually going to fill in some of these comments that I should be doing the whole time. Okay. Uh, animation equals animation plus, I'm going to say .5 which means it's only going to cycle twice before he swings. So it's going to be pretty quick. Um, that means that 
once, it, he, once his animation equals one, he actually is swinging the sword. Once it, it's got to kind of hover there for a second, so that we'll say if animation equals two, then action equals zero. So that means he's finished. But we should say if animation equals one, then uh, this is when the actual sword would hit. And I'll see. Unfortunately, the way I have this this set up, you can't hear any sounds coming out of the computer unless they're very loud. That's why you probably can't hear the alarm unless uh, I happen to be talking when the alarm's going off. You might hear it in the background a little bit. Uh, this would be a good place to put a sound in. I'm going to put in beep. For those of you who are following along and have never used this before, if you put the command beep, you, you will just hear a generic beep come from the computer speakers. It's just um, it's really good for debugging purposes and stuff. So you should hear the beep as his sword swings, and then he'll keep his sword. That swinging animation will be there for another, you know, two cycles, and he'll switch back to standing still. Let's try it. Um, something didn't work. Let's try this again. Hmm. Let me see here. I'm going to debug and see if this is actually running how I want it to. No, it's not. So in other words, it's not even getting to this code inside. If action equals four, do I have this set right? When we go to do something, action equals four. I have this wrong. It's supposed to be action equals five, so it's a typo. My fault. We go back to down here, five. He does, in fact, swing. Now you guys probably can't hear it if you're just watching the video. If you've actually, if you've done the code, then you'll hear a beep as he swings. But I do hear the beep. Now this would be the time to decide if he's swinging his sword too quickly. I actually think it'd be cool if it was a little bit slower just to try it. So what I'm going to do is instead of saying 0.5, I'm going to do 0.25. Just make sure that. To keep things simple, make sure that whatever fraction you're putting in there will eventually hit a nice whole number, the one and the two. There we go. See, I've slowed it down. It's a little nicer. Now, you know what I'm going to try? I'm going to have the first part go slower. Well, let's see here. Now, you know, you could change the speeds. You could say, for example, if a and I is less than one, then, and then you could say if A and I is greater than one, then A and I equals A and I plus point twenty-five. So this part could be point five. In other words, the first half of his swing is going to go quick, and the second half goes. It takes twice as long. And actually, it freaked out on me and got stuck. It, when you're working with fractions, another thing that's nice is that for the last one, I'm going to say greater than or equals to two just in case you get some crazy rounding error. Oh, I'm still getting a crazy rounding error. Um, oh, greater than or equals to one. There's, that's my problem. This isn't the problem. I don't know if you guys are following along on that one. If it was less than one, here's how the animation's going up, but as soon as it equals one, it never goes up anymore because I only had a greater than. So, greater than or equals to. Now, um, Actually, what I'm doing at this time, we're having a little bit of overlap because I can see the next frame of animation, which is this one right here. So you know what? It actually made it past. So I probably should say if it's greater than or equal to 2 and see if it fixes that. Yep. So I had just a little bit of a fraction, a little piece hanging over at the end there, which I didn't want. So I'm, I'm going to leave it this way. So he swings faster, or he gets ready to swing faster than he actually swings. So two different times, and I'm going to leave it in there even though it's so hard to tell the difference, only so that you guys know how you can split up your animations like that and make a part of them animate faster than the other part without necessarily having more or less pictures to work with. Um, alarm's going off, so I'm going to save the video.